evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Undisputed Heavyweight Champion of the World Show, made for the fans by a fan. I am your host, as always, Richard Tiemann. This is the award-winning fan show. Big thank you to all those of you that uh, maybe waited around or just saw this popped up and you're tuning in now. Apologize that the time is a little different tonight. We're about 30 minutes later than normal broadcast time, and that's because uh, there was a live session discussion with my intro to sportscasting class going on. I'm actually, I ducked out a half hour early from that so that I could start this a half hour late, but... That's okay, because these things are going to happen. There's going to be some scheduling conflicts, and that's okay, because we're still here to give you the same best damn football and nonsense that we can right here on The Fan Show. Now, I had a big weekend, of course, some of you know, uh, those of you that follow me on social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, wasn't very active on Snapchat, I... Did my best to cover the other three. Know that I was at Lilac City Comic Con. What a time it was. We'll talk about that with headlines as well as recap the action, including the Stanley Cup playoffs. Why J.R. Smith may very well be my new favorite basketball player. And all the action from the IFL, NAL, and a full rundown of what all went on at Lilac City Comic Con. I didn't even mean to rhyme that. That just happened. Tonight I have my interview with Daniel Logan that was done uh, on location at Lilac City Comic Con. He plays Boba Fett in Star Wars Episode Two: The Clone Wars, so we'll hear that. Plus, Lorenzo Brown will join me, a pre-recorded interview at the bottom of the hour. And that'll be a lot of fun. We talk about Sioux Falls Storm, the last couple of weeks here in the IFL, this weekend's game being a huge one for them. And then, of course, the postseason and what uh, their mindset is right now, making that classic Sioux Falls Storm postseason push. So without further ado or any more delay, good people of Fan Nation, let's get right down to business with today's headlines. Headlines, of course, once again, brought to you by Dynamite Enterprises. Hit up Ethan, get some custom swag for your business or your endeavor, whatever the case may be, because he will customize your world. Foam fingers, coasters, pens, lanyards, shirts, hats, maybe even underwear. I don't know. We haven't reached that point in the fan show yet where we're like, should we do boxers or panties? Like, could you imagine the fan show logo? A nice pair of cheekers. Those cute little, cute little panties for the ladies. I, I mean, we gotta, we gotta tap into that market. Am I right? Because they're, they're out there. Girls love the football and nonsense too. So maybe, maybe that's, maybe that's down the pipe. Maybe we can get some, some football and nonsense panties or boxers. We'll see what the future holds. But if you're gonna do it, Ethan's the guy to get it done. If you can dream it, you can envision it, imagine it, draw it, or write it. Ethan can slap it on. Any product that you want, and they are fantastic products. Every time someone buys a shirt or I give a shirt to somebody like Nathan O'Brien, the founder of Comic-Con, who I gave a shirt to him because of just how awesome he was this weekend. We'll talk more about that in a second. But he, they're all like, oh, wow, this is really great. The material's so soft. And that's because we went through the process. We built that relationship, that business professional relationship. And he said, help me help you. And I said, I want to help you help me. And let's let's do this. So, uh, what's the best size for a logo to still look crisp and good? He said, "This size, good." What shirt options do you have for this color? These ones, awesome. What would you recommend? Well, we can do it this way, this way, or this way. I recommend this way. Let's do it that way. And we got it done. And the shirts are flying off the uh, proverbial shelf there because if you guys want to order them, it's at fanshowofficial.com is the PayPal. Go place an order. Give me your details, and I will send you one out with a thank you note. Uh, courtesy of the fan show, Shane Merriman got his that he won for the bet that we had back in WrestleMania, and he got a thank you note with that. He's loving it. He's going to post a selfie of it later. But Dynamite Enterprises is where you want to go. DynamiteEnterprises.com. Ask for Ethan. Tell him the fan show sent you because we want to help customize your world. So that takes us to the headlines, which um, I feel... 
with as much good as is going on, we've got to start out with a bit of a somber note here. And it's not the way that I wanted the, the show to begin, but it is uh, unavoidable, inevitable. I have to talk about it because of my 49er fandom. And that was yesterday at about this time. Yeah, 24 hours ago, we learned of the tragic passing of 49er legend Dwight Clark. Number 87 uh, was diagnosed with ALS, I think, two years ago, and uh, we knew it was going to be a struggle. I I didn't know it was going to be this soon, but man, uh, was he a fighter, and he was just such a, 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 you know, the, the poster child for what you want your kids to be when they get into professional sports and he was the man behind the catch which will forever be one of the greatest nfl plays of all time and i think that it goes without saying that he will be missed greatly and he was at one of the niners games last year i never had the privilege or the pleasure of meeting him and really it, it hurts and i know that i was very sad for the passing of Dwight Clark. I'm warning all of you right now, I will ugly cry when Steve Young passes away. I'm gonna that is gonna be a day, man, because that dude, he was my hero. Uh, Dwight Clark was a lot of people's heroes, but he he is a niner through and through, and he will be forever remembered because heroes get remembered, but legends never die. And Dwight Clark was a legend. So moment of silence to remember the man who had the catch. Number 87, Dwight Clark. All right, so moving on then to greener pastures, lighter notes. We There was a great weekend otherwise, and, and my heart breaks for the, the Clark family. Thoughts and prayers are with you. And the, the 49er faithful, the front office, Robert Alvarino, all those guys who are feeling this a lot harder than I am as a fan, but people that knew him on a personal level. Uh, thoughts and prayers are with you guys because this is this is a tough time. Uh, the weekend otherwise was, was fantastic. Uh, I don't know if I could have asked for a better first Comic-Con experience. And I'll have a full write-up. I don't do a lot of write-ups, but I want to do a write-up on this one. And so I... I'm all excited for Comic-Con. Uh, Saturday morning rolls around. I'm like a little kid on Christmas morning. I'm just like, you know, I, I picked up my dry cleaning. I'm just like, I got to get the right suit, put on the Star Wars tie, looked sharp, did the, the lint roll thing and make sure I had my hair right and my glasses were buffed and polished and got the belt and, and Windex that that beautiful beauty and got it ready for, for its, its day and made sure I had my equipment or I made sure that I had myself and what I needed to get through the first port uh for first part first portion is what I was trying to say of the first day and so I get there and there's so many great cosplays and costumes I mean this is the fan show and this is what the fan show is about we are fans of so many things from music to pop culture sports and even just the the little things in life that uh, make us uh cheer and get passionate about something and these fans are no different Uh, the cosplayers the people that dress up that are fans of their favorite show game comic superhero whatever it was such a fantastic experience to be amongst these people who they might they may not possess the best social skills okay they might not be your average fan because they're not used to interacting with large groups of people they they dress up as their outlet as their release, as their way to be amongst the crowd. Maybe they even get into full character, but these people are simply fantastic, and I loved being welcomed into their family with open arms and being a part of that culture for the weekend. Um, So I get there, got the belt with me. I go and I check in. I get my my media credential. I meet some of the of the the people behind the scenes, and it was great to meet them. They're they're all great folks there, and they're either. Uh, in business cash, uh, or they have their Comic Con shirt on, or they are cosplaying as well. One of the guys was dressed as Cable. He looked fantastic. I said, "Where is Mr. Nathan O'Brien? I need to see that man." And they said, "Well, let's get him for you." So I run into to Nathan and meet him face to face officially for the first time. And he's got a sport coat on, a man after my own heart, a plaid pattern, one that if it goes missing, I don't know anything about it, Nathan. And uh, we look at each other. We're just like, well, 
here we are and talking and I said this is this is fantastic I can't wait to 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 do my thing and he's like yeah you know like what what's your plan what do you what are you thinking and I said well anytime that there's a a two-part event or a multi-day event that I attend I spend the first day sort of getting the lay of the land I will go around and sort of map it out and I'll scout my locations for everything and then I'll set up shop somewhere and I'll, I'll get to business, you know, whether that's later today or tomorrow. Um, I've got a media backdrop. Maybe I can set it up somewhere. Maybe I can pull everyone off to the side somewhere and, and conduct some interviews. But uh, really, it's just I'm going to be interacting with the fans and uh, getting my first real Comic-Con experience. And he turns to the side and he says, why don't you take this booth? And there's a, a table completely empty with just a black tablecloth over it and he's like these guys canceled last minute take it it's yours and i said for real and he's like absolutely so go go get your stuff get set up do do what you got to do have a great time and i said that is freaking awesome so i went home got a few things that i needed got my equipment gathered up my stuff and i set up the first ever fan show booth and it was at Lilac City Comic Con. And that was such an overwhelming feeling. I, I set it up. And once I got everything there, I brought my, my boom arms and my mic stands and the backdrop and everything and got it set up like it would be a legit booth. I said, what am I going to do with this thing? I'll do a live broadcast. But in the meantime, like, do I just sit here with with no audio or anything going? And, and I said, well, maybe people can get pictures in the booth on the set of the fan show in air quotes on the set and it turned out to be a a great idea sunday they were coming by and it was so much fun but uh saturday after i got it set up and i was going to go to the first cosplay contest nathan drops by and he's just like this you yeah this is like really professional this is a really professional setup and i said well you know i mean i try and he's just like, this looks great. He's like, I can't wait. So it was awesome. Uh, my wife, and my PR person, my personal assistant <laughs> was with me all day Sunday. And it was so much fun. We had people pose with the belt in front of the backdrop. The, the Foley belt got some TLC. A lot of hands got those hands of all the wrestling fans. And there were some out there. There were even some uh, fans that didn't know anything about wrestling or sports that were just excited to, to pose for a picture with it. So it was a great, great weekend. I got some fantastic interviews with the cosplay winners, the one from the experience category, the first timer, and then, of course, the next day, the juniors. Uh, some of those videos are up on the Facebook page as well as the YouTube channel. For those of you that haven't subscribed to the Fan Show's YouTube channel, it is out there. Working on getting the rest of the videos up. I'm having some issues with my iPhone. I apologize. Excuses, excuses. I know, I know. But, man, it was just such an eye-opening experience. I cannot wait to do my next con. And I don't know if I will do a booth or just do the media credentials thing or if by happenstance I get another booth that way. But... It was so much fun to be in the thick of it. Um, I, I will say, didn't have my best experience with uh, the Hulk Lou Ferrigno, which was a little disheartening because the Hulk is one of my favorite superheroes uh, ever, along with uh, Wolverine. But uh, I understand that that's going to happen from time to time. And in the three years that I have done this, I have only had two negative experiences with uh potential special guest or a celebrity and it's okay you know if he doesn't want to do media or press or if he just doesn't like me that's that's fine he's a man who is in high demand he's very busy his time is very demanding and uh, it is what it is but daniel logan my goodness boba fett the man who is forever part of the star wars family even if it's from the lesser of the trilogies uh was more than happy to do it and he was spending 15 minutes with every person that came up to his booth he had a line both days and it took forever to get through and it was just so just warm fuzzies all over to see this guy interact with the fans and then for the time that he gave me you guys are going to hear that clip 
a little later on, but oh man, it was just, it was such a great time at Lilac City Comic Con. I cannot thank Nathan O'Brien enough for letting me be a part of it. His wife, Rachel, lovely, uh, great assistant to him as well. Uh, the way that they work together and just how smoothly the con went. All the people that I met, everybody out there, uh, thank you. Thank you for the, the warm welcome and embrace into your world. The crossover was truly something special and I hope that we can it's the first of many. So that's my that's my recap of Comic Con. Of course I'm gonna do a write up and make it uh official, I guess, and more than just on air. But anyway, I, I express my feelings best behind the microphone, so felt that was needed. Speaking of behind the microphone, I've been getting in front of the camera a lot lately. I got my first one hundred percent on my first assignment for intro to sports casting. That's right. The big one, the class in my two year bachelor program with Full Sail University is underway. First assignment was pick a sports caster that you admire and that you're a fan of and pick a moment that they call the play and break it down for us. Why why you chose that play, what's special about it. List your top ten qualities for sports casting. I picked the man Joe Stacy and the Iowa Barnstormers and the Ryan Ballantyne one-handed catch from last year against the Wichita Falls Nighthawks. 100% on that. Teacher loved everything that I had to say, including shout-out to using a clip of a game that maybe not a whole lot of us had seen and exposing that world to the rest of the class. So 100% on that. It was great. Paid some homage to Joe and the guys, but yeah, I couldn't have thought of a better play. That was a beautiful call all around. Joe is amazing. So every submission for homework that we do is in front of the camera. So I guess I'm getting better. I did some in front of the camera work when I interviewed. (laughs) Well, Daniel Logan for one, and then Captain Jack Sparrow. That was fun. That was, that was probably the highlight of the weekend was finding someone who was that dressed up and that in character and getting a quick, you know, minute 30 with them uh april o'neill from teenage mutant ninja turtles or channel six her and i interviewed each other and that was a lot of fun a great cosplay and then we did the comic crawl that night so again more fun times were had so many great costumes and and get ups and people in full character or or characters that nobody's heard of that they just took the time out of their day to say i want to do this world but my own thing and they knocked it out of the park so that was a lot of fun uh, homework, my class, uh, Intro to Sports Casting, is moving right along. My courses at Full Sail are moving right along. We had more Stanley Cup action. The series, oh my, my, my. Um, it is all Washington Capitals right now. They lead the series 3-1 to one after the Vegas Golden Knights opened it. one nothing. This was before... Okay, so before this third loss... Their second loss to the Capitals was the first time they lost back-to-back games all postseason long. So in four rounds, they hadn't dropped back-to-back games ever. This is franchise history, mind you. And now Washington has given them their first three losses in a row and are in very much control of the Stanley Cup Finals. They win one more, it's done. It'd be 4-1. to one which this would be the first series for Washington that they only let the opponent get one. And this would be the first series, obviously, for the Golden Knights that they let the opponent get more than two. Like, how crazy is that? So Capitals have already beat the Golden Knights more than any other team this postseason. So in Vegas Golden Knights postseason history. And the Capitals are one win away from putting this thing away. And that would be the first for them in their franchise. So either way, a Never Have I Ever is going to get their first ever, and they can close that chapter on this story. But the Golden Knights, I don't think, have anything to hang their head about. Of course, we would love to see a close series. I'd love to see this thing tied at 2-2 and right now, or 3-3 and going into the last one. But whatever happens with this next game for the Vegas Golden Knights, win or lose, uh, they have had an incredible inaugural season, and they are truly uh, the heart of Vegas. Congratulations. Uh, Regardless of the outcome, guys, you have earned it.
In basketball news, <laughs> the Warriors lead it. 2 nothing as they go to Cleveland for the third game in the series. And J.R. Smith is everyone's favorite or most hated player right now because with it uh, tied, and he didn't apparently know that it was tied, but with the game tied and four seconds left, foul shot off the rim, he gets it, and he goes to run out the clock because he thought they were in the lead. <laughs> you cannot make this stuff up, folks. Like, this is so fantastic i can't even contain myself but it's it's okay you know these things this this happens this is life it's all right though it's nothing okay it's everything to hang your head about because if you don't know what the score is and you're playing the game i don't know if i have a whole lot of sympathy for you i really don't but that's that's your basketball news that's all i got for you uh football of course the passing of dwight clark uh the eagles their appearance at the White House, like all the Super Bowl champions get to, has been canceled by Donald Trump. Or they've been uninvited, like the Golden State Warriors. Apparently only 10 of them were going to go. And uh, Trump said, no, this uh, you guys can't come. <laughs> Is there a bigger child in the world than Donald Trump? And here's the thing. I'm even on the right side of things uh, when it comes to the political spectrum. Now, I didn't vote for either of them. I chose the, the middle ground and voted for, for Mr. Johnson. But, my God, I don't think there's a bigger little kid in the world than Donald Trump sometimes. I really don't. Not one of the Eagles players took a knee during the anthem all of last season, by the way. I feel it needs to be noted. Uh, but, yeah, that was the bigger news to come out of the weekend. Trump saying, sorry, you can't come. Um, okay. Okay. <laughs> Apparently, the White House explains the move to cancel the Eagles' visit, according to Austin Noblock of NFL.com, around the NFL, a day after canceling the Philadelphia Eagles' scheduled Super Bowl 52 celebration visit, the White House provided further explanation as to why it decided to scrap the visit in a statement be- released by Press Secretary Sarah Huckabee Sanders. The White House said it decided to cancel the event after learning that only a tiny number of players planned to attend the celebration. The Eagles tried last week to reschedule it, per Sanders, but the dates offered by the team conflicted with President Trump's schedule. He's probably golfing those days. The White House, despite sensing a lack of good faith, nonetheless attempted to work with the Eagles over the weekend to change the event format that could accommodate a smaller group of players. The statement said, unfortunately, the Eagles offered to send a tiny handful of representatives while making clear that the great majority of players would not attend the event despite planning to be in D.C. today. In other words, the vast majority of Eagles team decided to abandon their fans. Okay. White House said the Eagles initially told them that 81 individuals connected to the club, players, coaches, executives, and other team personnel would attend the celebration. Philadelphia safety Malcolm Jenkins, a co-founder of the Players Coalition, reminded his followers on Twitter that no one on the Eagles kneeled or sat during the national anthem before games. He also explained, in part, some of the motivation for why he planned on not attending the celebration even before it was canceled. Quote, It's hard to meet with people who don't agree with you and to have tough conversations about uncomfortable race-related issues and how to make positive change. Jenkins wrote, It takes courage to stand up for the truth, even if it's not a popular one. So there there you have it. Uh, I mean, wow. That's really something, isn't it? Just... Uh, the line between sports and politics i feel is officially gone ladies and gentlemen and with that that brings us to the midway point of the show where i want to once again remind you all about how awesome praxis is because they let you be yourself at work and what i mean by that is that they are a co-working company that has leased a 3500 square feet space on the holly mason building's fourth floor 157 south howard street and they're doing amazing things for entrepreneurs they want to celebrate with you they want to encourage you they want to help you be a better you at work that's what praxis does i have a trophy because praxis decided to throw this event 
for entrepreneurs in the Spokane area, and I took home the beautiful light bulb that will forever have a place front and center on my shelf in my studio for Best Media because they thought entrepreneurs like myself deserved a little spotlight. Now, I didn't I wasn't guaranteed to win. It was by vote and there was some stiff competition for my category, but I am honored to be part of the Praxis family so to speak now. And I think that you guys should take advantage of being part of that family as well. Why not? What do you have to lose? You have to dress up or you have to make sure that you're wearing a polo or a dress shirt to work. Nobody wants that life. You want pajamas and slippers. You want to not have to worry about if you missed a spot shaving or if your hair is presentable. You want to be able to go and do your work however you're comfortable. Then, And that's... That's the American dream, to do your work the way you want to be able to do it. And if that's in a Cheshire Cat onesie or a full-on suit and tie, then you can do that at Praxis. 275 gets you everything they have to offer, with his, which is both professional and recreational amenities. They have a small kitchenette, conference rooms, desks, uh, group meeting areas. There's no time limits. There's no constraints, no fees as far as their usage of their facilities 275 and that gets you the wi-fi the key everything that you need to be yourself at work hit up robbie fantastic individual robbie r-o-b-b-i at praxiscoworking.com and schedule an appointment to go down and check it out for yourself don't take my word for it it's a nine minute walk from river park square if you're in the greater spokane area you don't have an excuse left not to check out praxis coworking so go and do it do yourself a favor and take the next step to being yourself at work. And with that, I'd like to go ahead and uh, do the Lorenzo Brown interview. After that, my one-on-one with Mr. Daniel Logan of Star Wars 2, The Clone Wars. And don't forget, this weekend is a huge one in the IFL. That's right. Iowa sweeps the series against Arizona, what a game, what a game. It was really something fantastic. And I got home just in time for the one-minute warning. I stayed off social media. I I muted social media accounts just so I could check it out. But 4138 is your final in Des Moines at the well. And wow, 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 do we have a fight to the finish now. Because the Iowa Barnstormers are in sole possession of first place with a 10-2 record. They now own all three of Arizona's losses. Sioux Falls sits in third, one game behind, 9-3, and and they play Iowa this weekend. This could throw a wrench into everyone's plans if Sioux Falls gets the win. Then you're looking at 10-3 and for the top three teams because Arizona will not play again. That was their last game of the regular season. They now anxiously await, or I'm sorry, they will play Nebraska one more time. I don't know if anyone expects Nebraska to be victorious over Arizona. So if they win, you've got 11-3. and three. Iowa would be 11-2. and two. Sioux Falls would be 9-4. and four. If uh, Iowa wins, then you've got 11-2. Arizona, if they win, 11-3, and three, and Sioux Falls, 9-4. and four. If Sioux Falls wins, you've got 10-3, and three. Iowa, 10-3. And, and Arizona would be either 11-3 and three or 10-4. and four. So really, Sioux Falls and Iowa, I don't know if they could flip-flop or what, but there's there's some scenarios going on right now where it's going to get sticky. Like, super-duper sticky. Cedar Rapids, congrats. They have snapped their, God, what was it, nine-game losing streak? They were victorious over the Nebraska Danger, and they now sit at 2-10. Uh, and 10. They will meet Green Bay this weekend, which, again, I'm so sorry to the people of Green Bay. I will not be able to make it back this season. I made a Facebook post about it. If you guys are friends with me on Facebook, you've seen it. But please know that I love you guys there in Green Bay. I cannot wait to come back, and I'm sorry that it could not be this season. But we will make up for it, and the fan show will return to Titletown, bigger and better than ever. Uh, And then, of course, you had Arizona 
well, doing Arizona things, am I right? Um, <laughs> they kept it close, man. It was close. Sioux Falls blanked, or I guess melted the blizzard, 60-21. to 21. Holy crap. So, Arizona with three losses, all three to Iowa. What a season this has shaped up to be, and we've got just two weeks left until the postseason is officially upon us, and then the road to the United Bowl, which is going to be a great one. Great finish. In the National Arena League, that was a great weekend as well. Uh, Columbus Lions fell just shy to the Jacksonville Sharks. So are the Sharks the new number one? I don't know. Mass, they got another win, and that was against the... uh, the Maine Mammoths, 52-37. Maine is right in... I mean, they're so close to being a really, really good team. Carolina takes care of business in Lehigh Valley, 58-38. And those are your scores from the National Arena League. So we now have standings midway through the season that are pretty much all knotted up. Carolina Cobras, 6-2. and two. Massachusetts Pirates, 6-3. and three. Jacksonville Sharks, 6-3. and three. Columbus Lions, 4 and two and that is week nine standings for the nal i'm done blabbering we're gonna get to the lorenzo brown interview so storm fans enjoy here it is the quarterback of the sioux falls storm all right ladies and gentlemen joining me now is the quarterback of the sioux falls storm as we get ready for our postseason push in the ifl it is lorenzo brown how you doing man i'm good man how you doing Doing good. I got to say, though, this is one of those uh, probably rare occasions in IFL history because normally uh, this time of year, we're all about the Sioux Falls Storm. You guys certainly look to be in postseason shape and form, but everybody's talking about the Rattlers and the Barnstormers, which I think is a first in like a decade. Uh, is, mm-hmm. is that weird for you? I mean, uh, it's a little bit different, but I wouldn't say it's weird. I mean, you know, there's other good teams in this league, and um, we're still one of them. And uh, it's good to see that the the league has got, you know, good teams to make a good competitive ball ball games and a good competitive season. So it's a good good for uh, for all, all, all factors. Now, you've been in with the Storm for the year that you guys dominated, went all the way to the United Bowl 1, and then you were with them last year when they lost. And now this year you're kind of under the radar. Uh, out of those three, like, do you have, like, a, a preference? Like, which – version of the attention and the storm that you prefer as a quarterback and a leader on the team? Um, I mean, every year is different. You know, no team is the same. And uh, you just got to go with the adjustments. And, uh, um, I mean, you always – you don't want it to be too easy. I mean, you want to <laughs> you want to face adversity. I mean, I mean, it's good to face adversity at times. It, you know, it tests the true character. Um, and uh, I think uh, we've been tested quite a bit this year. And – um, some games we fell up short, and uh, we learned from it, and it's just going to make us better in the long run. Yeah, you guys certainly have uh, your hands full this upcoming weekend, and that is with the Iowa Barnstormers. Now, they're coming to you guys, and mm-hmm. last time, you know, you, the series is tied one in one right now. And, of course, yeah. you guys have the opportunity to not play spoiler, but just screw this whole damn thing up where we could have three teams with a tied record and have to go to, like, strength of schedule, which, you know, in a six-team league, is there really one? And then, of course, yeah. whatever the other tiebreakers are. So what's been the, um, I don't know, the, the mood in the locker room like going into a game at home against the team that's been red hot right now? Yeah, I mean, uh, I have no idea what that scenario would be um, <laughs> at all. I mean, we've been, I mean, we've been talking about it, and it just no real solution has came. Uh, no, you know, realistic solutions came about. I mean, it's just what ifs and and what about this, what about that. But I mean, we really can't get to that until we take care of business on Friday. Um, and uh, you're right. I mean, they won six or seven in a row. Um, and uh, they're playing well on both sides of the ball, all three phases of the game, and you got to tip your hat off to them, um, you know. But uh, at the end of the day, we know we know what it takes to to, to play, you know, championship football, and uh, we've been there. Um, and uh, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna be ready to go. We've had a good uh, good first day of practice yesterday. We're gonna hopefully have another good one today, and uh, get my guys in the right you know frame of mind to go to war because it's going to be a good it's going to be a four quarter you know back and forth game 
And uh, last game, they, they got the best of us. We did not come to play. And uh, that's going to be a different story on Friday. Yeah, I have no doubt that you guys, both the team as well as your um, fans, are going to be extremely pumped and pack the place like they do at this point in every season where you guys are getting ready to make your United Bull push. Now, when it comes to the remainder of the season, you guys have one more game against Green Bay again at home, and the Iowa Barnstormers have another game at home against Cedar Rapids. Now, this game, if you win, that doesn't necessarily mean that you guys would clinch home field to the United Bowl or no. even host it, but obviously yeah. it would certainly complicate things and put pressure on the Barnstormers to win that last game as well as you yeah. guys and yours. So this game mm-hmm. may not have the biggest implications, but still um, enough of them where, it, you know, it, what would a win this weekend uh, at home against Iowa mean for you guys headed into your postseason push? Um, you know, it'll put us in a, in, a, in a good frame of mind against a really good opponent. You know, right now they're top of the league. Um, and uh, it's just whatever we want is right in front of us. I mean, we get can, we control, we can control. Um, you know, if we if we win this Friday and, and take care of business next Saturday, um, you never know what can happen. I mean, you know, Iowa doesn't have an easy opponent in Cedar Rapids. Um, I'll tell you that because Cedar Rapids is a really tough team. They play hard. They got a good good quarterback on their team, and uh, you never know what can happen. But uh, we can't look forward or look look ahead, and neither neither is Iowa. It's a uh, you know one week at a time approach, and we got to take it that that uh, that way. Now, Coach Curtis Riggs uh, has been amazing at great at different game prep. You know, getting you guys prepared for different opponents at home or on the road. Now, since you guys are tied with this series and this one having uh, a lot of impact for what could happen this postseason, has there been any change to his message to you guys to his game prep, or is this just another week in the IFL for Coach Riggs? Um, you know. What one message that uh, that kind of stuck with me is uh, really true to what how last game went with them is we were uh, we were dominated up front both sides of the ball they were more physical than us they got after us and uh, that's been a big focal point um, they wanted it more than we did um, and we waited too long to try to you know make something out of that game and uh, we uh, it, it's on it's on my mind it's on our it's on everybody else's mind and we gotta we got to match their physicality because, you know, they're going to come out this aggressive same way. And, you know, they, they, they feel like they got something to prove. Um, and, uh, yeah, we're going to, well, well, that's, that's one takeaway that, uh, that's, that's, that's true for us, I believe. Yeah, I believe it too. I think that you guys are still the Sioux Falls storm. I mean, and, mm-hmm. until further notice, until you guys uh, have a record similar to that of, of the Titans, which, you know, uh, every team is going to have their their struggles, but uh, you guys are always going to be that force in this league to be reckoned with, uh, regardless mm-hmm. of if you're first, third, or, or last place in however many teams there are in the league year to year. But uh, for those that are saying that this is – you know, it's not the same storm, and it's a different year now. And uh, you know, for those that are sleeping on the storm, why should why are they wrong in your mind? What what is it about this team that you know has every bit of chance to go and win the whole thing right now? Well, I mean, if if they sleeping on us, they gonna get woke up real quick. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, I mean, that's 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 their fault. They want to sleep on us, but at the end of the day, I know. What type, what type of team I have, I know the abilities of my teammates and myself. And, uh, um, yeah, I mean, just you got to just stay tuned, I guess. <laughs> I'll leave it at that, really. A true teaser by Lorenzo Brown. Well, uh, Lorenzo, it's been a, a very entertaining season. I've li- I know that it's really only been – uh, sort of a three-team league, but there are you know six teams total, and you have to get those wins where you can get them, and not all of them have have come easily, if any, to any of the teams really. But you guys are in tip-top playoff form right now. Um, it showed this last week, which was I think great for you guys, especially home or on the road against an opponent like Iowa, who's been um, you know that team for for the last several weeks. But uh, there's still Arizona. There's still whatever may happen with Nebraska, but you guys always seem to to right the ship at, at the perfect time, and that is uh, the push for postseason. So I think that you guys have all the right components uh, to make this a very entertaining uh, last couple of weeks of regular season and then, of course, the uh, upcoming postseason. Now, 
For you, uh, there's some other sports going on. Are you keeping up with the NBA Finals? Uh, yeah, man. I uh, <laughs> we were in Green Bay at that game one, um, and uh, yeah, I'm. <laughs> It was uh, kind of frustrating to watch, but uh, <laughs> I, uh, that, I mean, they, you know, it's, it, it, it's a sports for you. I mean, you know, you never know what could happen, and, and you know, stuff that you wouldn't expect to happen happens. And but yeah, I mean, it, it's good. It was good, good for entertainment. And uh, I mean, it just kind of sucks that it's one. It's not one one, but it's oh, uh, it's zero two or two. Oh, how you look at it, but uh, still a lot of basketball left to play. I mean, you got LeBron on your team, and you know, he's the best in the world. Um, and you got to tip your hat off to him even more for what he's doing against that team and what he has on his team. But, um, yeah, I mean, interested to see how things happen when Cavs be at home. And, yeah, so it's only only time will tell with that. Now, in your entire playing career uh, with any sport, we'll, we'll leave the door open for, for any example from near or far as far as memory goes. Have you – or anyone close to you had a J.R. Smith-like moment? I feel like Judd Harold's a good candidate for, for possibly having a J.R. <laughs> Smith moment. <laughs> um, uh, I'm trying to think. Uh, actually, <laughs> yeah, I mean, and, and, uh, and uh, well, I think in my junior or senior year, we were, uh, um, I think we were up, and it was about like 30 30- for something like a little, a little bit of time left on the clock and threw an inbound pass to one of my teammates and he went the wrong way <laughs> and actually uh, laid it up for the other team and tied the game up for them um so i mean that that's kind of a blunder like that but i mean it's kind of like one of those how lebron was looking at him i was like what are you like what are you doing <laughs> uh, but uh but yeah i mean the other team was cheering for him so yeah we ended up winning the game anyway so it, yeah. it is what it is it, it, it didn't go as bad as it could have went that's the important thing, right? I mean, as long as yeah. you end up getting the the last laugh on that one. But yeah. uh, I think there's been a few moments in the NFL where, you know, you're trying yeah. to run out the, the clock and, and the, the running back, you know, instead of cuts outside, he cuts inside or the receiver yeah. tiptoes yeah. and gets tackled inbounds. So, exactly, yeah. But I'm sure that there's uh, plenty of, of moments out there to be had. Hopefully not at this point in the season, though. We need you guys mm-hmm. at your best, and I think we will get nothing short of that uh, between you, yes. Arizona, Iowa, and then, of course, uh, in Nebraska, because I think they've, they're have they getting it figured out, and uh, no better time to do that right now. Uh, for mm-hmm. you, when it comes to making coaching changes, have you been through any yourself? What was that? When it comes to making a head coaching change midseason, have mm-hmm. you been through that yourself as a player? Um, not midseason. Um, I went through a coaching change my junior year to senior year of football, like, like right before we started like fall camp. So that was kind of different. Um, but yeah, that not not midseason. I couldn't imagine what that would be like. Uh, kind of tough on the guys, you know, having the staff come in, guys, new coach come in, wanted things done his way when you're used to a certain way. But, uh, I mean, you know, you got it's all about how you respond and you got to adapt to change and, you know, and got to just roll with the punches, really. Yeah, and you're the QB, you're the leader, so obviously, you know, it's uh, there's no task too tall for you, and I think mm-hmm. that you definitely showcase that well on the field every, every weekend, Friday, Saturday, or Sunday. <laughs> but you got... Uh, you got the tallest of tasks this weekend. It is the 8th of June. Iowa Barnstormers going on the road to the Sioux Falls Storm. Uh, the final of this three-game series uh, pending the postseason, of course, and all eyes will be on that game. So no no pressure or anything, Lorenzo. Yeah. Not, none of that. Yeah. You, know, you got <laughs> to just uh, be be relaxed, you know. And, hey, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm even keel across the board, man. Pressure bust pipes. I ain't about to flood, so we'll be all right. <laughs> You need to lay that down on a track so I can have that for my, my pregame <laughs> motivation in uh, in my headphones when I go out there. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right, man. Well, hey, I appreciate you taking the time to talk a little bit of IFL and uh, and why the storm or still the storm, and especially with you as their quarterback, but tell Judd and the rest of the guys that I said hello and, uh, you know, best of luck for the remainder of the season and uh, all the best uh, during the postseason. Hey, man, it's always a pleasure, Rich. Thank you. And, uh, We'll uh, hope to see you soon, maybe at the at the playoff game or something like that. Yeah, man, you know I'll be at that United Bowl, so you just got to punch right. your ticket, man, and I'll I'll do my All thing. Right. <laughs> All right, All right. We'll take do, care, man. man. We'll see you. Yeah, bye. bye. 
And once again, that was Lorenzo Brown of the Sioux Falls Storm. And I used to have a cool storm button that I would push that would make a really cool sound effect right there. But I have since replaced it. I think I replaced it with the the drum roll or the list by Chris Jericho. Either way, I promised you guys another interview, and we've got just enough time for this one. This is the highlight of the weekend, which was my one-on-one, my exclusive with... Mr. Daniel Logan of Star Wars Episode 2, The Clone Wars. Enjoy. All right, live at Lilac City Comic Con with the one only Daniel Logan from Star Wars Episode 2. It is a pleasure. Welcome to the show. Thank you so very much, man. How are you doing? I'm I'm doing great. You have been busy, to say the least. You've been running around. You've been holding kids, fighting around. Like, what, What gives you the energy to be... That Daniel here at the cons. I think the fact that I grew up on such a small island where you are always taught to be quiet and humble, um, it, it kind of like you know gets ingrained in you as a young kid. Where I grew up with a family of six, so I'm one of the youngest. So to have to um, basically get any uh, attention in my family, I had to be a loud mouth, over energetic, you know, <laughs> outgoing personality. But thanks to the convention circuit, it's allowed me to bring that energy to some. Uh, place of people that actually really embrace and enjoy that uh, interaction that anyway. It's quite the culture, and I mean, you have done other things, but you're most well-known for your role in Star Wars Episode Two, which is, hey, great company to be in. And it's, it's a great family. What has that done for you? It's done everything. I mean, I went from a 13-year-old kid who, you know, my mother raised us on welfare, to becoming the kid who was able to support the family. We went from a welfare house to a you know, uh, renting a, a nicer house, you know, and being able to travel the world and um, and also take care of my family as well. So that was a bit less lonely to me with my family too. Um, and now I just had a son three months ago. It's just now just poured over to him too, you know. Like he's starting to, re- you know, reap the, uh, the benefits of this world and the most from the convention. Um, so, yeah, completely, you know, did a whole 180 on me, man. Well, I'm so happy to hear that you were able to take care of your family as a result. Because there's so many stories you hear like that. They had a hard upbringing. They got their opportunity. They made the best of it. And glad Star Wars was able to do that for you. Now, you're in Spokane. How many times have you been here to Spokane? It's my very first time. Um, we uh, rented an Airbnb um, right on the hill overlooking the Spokane River. Okay. It's gorgeous. So waking up every morning out, out there. We went for a little hike this morning along uh, the river down towards the new donut store. Um, but yeah, it, it's, uh, it's a beautiful city. Airbnb. See, I've had a few Airbnb experiences in my time, and my assistant and my wife, she's a little hesitant on the idea. Do you think you could convince her that Airbnb is an okay way to stay when you're traveling? Well, you know, it depends. If you're in, only in for a couple of days or whatever, then, you know, maybe the hotel is, is a better option. But nowadays I've found that Airbnb is, uh, for me, a little more convenient. I have a, sh- I have a, a kitchen which I like to cook my own food. Uh, you're not in a hotel environment where you feel like you, you know you got all the noise of the uh, next door neighbors or the elevator next door or banging and running up and down the hallways. Um, so I prefer them. But then when you get an Airbnb, Airbnb, you usually either have to Uber or you have to get a rental car. That's very true. So that's the other flip side. Um, but Airbnb has allowed me to live in some areas that I've never been out to have the opportunity. To live in so I was just in uh, uh, Oregon. Uh, at the Star Wars store, and they they hired me at the Airbnb, and my Airbnb was like a four four story ranch. But when you would when you would uh, when you woke up in the morning on the top level of this Airbnb, you actually got to see Mount Hood, and I mean the entire Mount Hood. I mean it looked like it touched the skies. Or something. <laughs> so um, I like it, you know, just for the fact that I like some different uh, scenes. So with Star Wars having the next three episodes, two of the three are now done. Have you been hit up to make a cameo appearance at all or anything like that? Can we expect to see Daniel Logan in the final installment? You never know, right? You never know when uh, <laughs> the space will ever appear in the galaxy again. But um, hopefully uh, Boba's bounties are far from over as well. So we never know. Is there going to be a Boba Fett, a Star Wars story? Well, that's, that's the rumor right now. Hey, I love it. I love a good rumor. 
Yeah, it's a good one. All right. Well, do you have a favorite Star Wars character other than yourself? Well, I love Darth Maul because he brought a, a different uh, a dynamic to the lightsaber. I yes. mean, when he popped that, that second lightsaber out the back, <laughs> no one was expecting it. Stuff got serious. It, it really did. Business it got was real. Um, so, but for me, I love Yoda. The fact that I love Yoda is because he's not normal. He talks very weird, which a lot of us have, you know, speech problems and impediments. He's very short. I'm very short. He looks very weird. I'm very weird. You know, so I can communicate with this guy, but he's also the guy you don't want to mess with. He's yep. the quiet guy that you will like. Don't want to make sure you don't get on his back. He's side the guy. I don't. I don't want to fight you, man. You don't want to fight me. Exactly. <laughs> you know, that's why I love you because it's the humbleness that comes from the surprise. Well, it is Daniel Logan, a man of the people and the fans on the fan show. Thank you. I hope thank you had you, a great brother. stay, and thank I you did. for coming to Spokane Comic Con. Spokane was amazing. And thank you, Daniel Logan. You are a true gentleman and a man of the people and the fans, as I mentioned there. Like it really was. Uh, it was just so polarizing, you know. Like uh, one side, you had Lou, who was just, you know, hi, thanks, you know, okay, next, and. Then on the opposite side, of course, there were some people in between. I think the, the black Power Ranger was there. Not the black guy who plays a Power Ranger, but the color black Power Ranger. <laughs> I think he was there. And uh, there was a writer. There was a, an actress from the series The Flash, which I do not watch. Um, not that I don't like it or I'm against it. I just I, I don't watch it. I haven't had a chance. I haven't gotten around to it. I'm not a big DC guy. But I hear good things. Um, so opposite, you have Daniel, very much the opposite of Lou. He's just he's like, how you doing? He's getting down to their level. He's he he spent more time in front of his signing booth than he did behind it, and I think that is incredible. And he is such a man of the people that I hope more follow his suit. So uh, thank you again, Mr. Daniel Logan. Thank all of you for tuning in to this. Tuesday episode of the Fan Show. Fun little recap. We had Lilac City Comic Con talk. All the cosplayers. Go check out all the videos. They are up on the Facebook page. I'm loading some more to the YouTube channel for the Fan Show. And then, of course, everything will be up on the website by the end of the week. But thank you to everyone that stopped by the booth, that said hello to me, that uh, inquired about the Fan Show and everything. It was such just an incredible experience. I'm still overwhelmed by everything and, and I'm speechless and can't believe that that it happened the way that it did but it did and I, I feel like I made the most of it so until the next comic-con that uh, the fan show is at I'm just going to keep doing what I'm doing which means next up is uh, Van's Warped Tour for the fan show and uh, it is June there is a big announcement coming towards the end of the month so stay tuned for that and the best way to stay tuned for upcoming news and uh announcements from the fan show or just really all the daily football and nonsense is to follow us on twitter at fan show official like the facebook page facebook.com slash fan show official and you can of course uh follow the instagram which is the fan show and snap me at the fan show then of course there's the website thefanshow.com your home base for all things football and nonsense needs a little tlc and we're going to give it some this weekend so don't worry fear not we're we're working on it my apologies i'm more social media savvy than i am website savvy and and i feel that there's maybe been some missed opportunities out there but uh to the good folks at undisputed belts your belt once again was a huge success if you would like a belt hit up undisputedbelts.com you can follow them on all social media platforms all the major ones at undisputed belts tell them the fan show sent you or that you got to hold one of their belts signed by mick foley and they might just cut you a deal so that's everything for this Tuesday edition of the Fan Show. Tomorrow we're back on track. Uh, same Fan Show time, same Fan Show place. The regularly scheduled Wednesday edition of Football and Nonsense, which is 7.30 Eastern, 4.30 Pacific. If you missed any of tonight's episode, you can catch uh, it in podcast form, iTunes, SoundCloud, iHeartRadio, and, of course, Spreaker. Dot com. So until next time, ladies and gentlemen, best of luck to you and yours. Go Niners, and remember, of course, it's all fun and games until you butt fumble. Good night, folks! Do you remember the time that Mark Sanchez ran into his one player's butt? That was funny sports. Thank you for having me on the show, man. I love the fan show. <laughs>